Well, I'm just going to talk over the music. I, I would like to welcome everyone today. I'm so happy that you could join us as we remember our, our great friend, Queenie Gilroy. And uh, what I would like to do to start things off, one reason that we chose this spot for her memorial was that Reedy was a wordsmith. Reedy loved words, loved writing, loved everything connected with words. Um, the day that Reedy died, she was celebrating the publication of her book, Straight from Crooked, in paperback, and some of you that I see here today were at that celebration with her. Um, um, the 20th of July. Um, we thought that it would be a fitting tribute to Reedy in her home community of Bloomfield Hills to make a presentation to the Bloomfield Township Library, copies of her book Straight from Crooked, so that a local author can be celebrated in her home community. And I've asked the library director to come up. Uh, received Reedy's books. They were very delighted to have a local author. And uh, it was uh, an old And these are four copies for the Township Library. And we hope that uh, thank you very much. I'm very pleased to accept these uh, books written by a beloved friend for our library collection here. Thank you so very much. I'm glad that we could have you all be here today to remember a good friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to share with you a little bit about what we have in mind today. This is going to be a very informal memorial uh, celebration of Reedy's life. I want anybody who ever feels that they have anything that they want to say, to feel free to do it. This is a comfortable place where it's going to be easy to talk. I know a lot of people think that public speaking is like the scariest thing anybody could do, but you're not speaking in public, you're speaking among friends. So just look at it that way. And if there's anything you want to share, don't be that opportunity. Um, we're going to talk a little bit, just to put a framework around things, about Reading's life, because many of you have no reading at different times of your life, probably all put together we cover, you know, the span of her life, uh, of her life. But uh, there's probably very few that knew everything about her. So what we are here today to do is fill in the gaps that we don't know. So some of us that knew reading early in life are going to learn more about her later life, and some of us who knew her later in life will learn about the young lady. And I hope these photographs help uh, settle that for you. And the other thing is, um, if you heard the music as you came in today, a lot of it, the Elvis hymns. I don't know if you knew, but Reedy became a big Elvis fan in recent years, and she would drive around in her car listening to Elvis hymns on the car radio. And so that's, that's how we chose the music today. Um, we have uh, a minister here who did the graveside service, Denise Edwards, and Denise is going to say a few of the spiritual words um, as part of the memorial. But then after that happens, we are going to go into just our memories of Reedy. And we've got a couple of people that have asked me to start out, so we've got an order starting out. But there's no particular batting order after that. Um, and if you want to come up here, Denise. Uh, Denise is, she's very familiar with uh, handling things like this and handling interviewing people and uh, commentary on the radio and things like that. Uh, Denise will help you get started if you need to. Uh, she can ask you a few interesting questions to, to get the ball rolling if you don't exactly know how to start. You, you don't have to follow Denise's cue. You can have your own, but I'm just letting you know she's here uh, as a crutch or a facilitator. Yes. Okay. So um, right now, then, I'm going to turn it over uh, to Denise to get things started. And um, thank you again very much for being here today. Well, good afternoon, everyone. If we can uh, just pause for a moment, and we're just going to open in prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather. We thank you for the life of Brini. We thank you, Lord, for her spirit and all that she has meant to us throughout those years. Father, we pray that this time together will be one of celebration, one because we know you, the author of life. Our Lord and Savior, we thank you for her life, and we just pray that this is a celebration worthy of her in Jesus' name. So we're going to ask that. And so what we're going to do, what I'd like to first do, is just call your attention to the obituary or her life story. But today, is, we would like today's thing to be like a storytelling thing. And the reason we're doing that is because she was an author. And so if you think of yourself really as not coming up here to talk to people, but coming, think of it as story time. I would imagine most people in this room have been to story time. I know I have. We all had to do that as children. You sat in a circle in the library floor and somebody read a book and you had to make, they always ask you questions to make sure you weren't sleeping or, or dreaming and what have you. So we're going to pay attention today because everybody here is a puzzle piece in the life of Green. Everybody here represents something significant, whether you think it's big or small. Everybody here is symbolic of something important about her life. So please feel free to come up and share your story. So we're going to use this story time to celebrate. As I said, the graveside, we don't look at this time of transition as a time of sadness. This is a time to celebrate because we, she was given the gift of life and then she was given to each of us. So we all had an opportunity to enjoy her. So I never think of death as something sad. I always think of it as a transition because it's part of living. It, you know, they, once you're born, you, you're going to get there eventually. So it's no point in, in, in having remorse or fear over something that comes natural. But it is a wonderful opportunity to celebrate a life that got to be impactful in one way or another. So just draw your attention here in case you haven't read it yet. We'll just go through it briefly. Rini Terry Gilroy. Rini Terry Gilroy passed away July 25th, 2013 after a brief illness. She was 72 years old. Her warm and loving nature, as well as her sharp mind, keen observations of current events, and human foibles will be greatly missed. And that's true. She was born on March 25, 1941, to Art and Ruth Terry in Detroit, Michigan. She attended Cooley High School. Later, she graduated from Wayne State University, receiving a Bachelor of Arts degree, as well as the honorary Phi Beta Kappa Key for academic excellence. Reedy was the widow of the renowned neurologist John Gilroy, MD. And if any of you know her story, he was also her actual doctor. And that is how they met. She is survived by her sister, Anne Ramroth William, and their children, Erica Sidell, William Terry Ramroth, and Lori Ramroth. She is also survived by her stepdaughter, Wendy Gilroy Clements, and David, and their children, Jordan, Elena, and Jack. We had an opportunity to meet them at the grave size family. She is presented, uh, she is preceded in death by her parents, Art and Ruth Terry, and her sister Lynn Terry. Reedy authored works of fiction and screenplays. Copies of her most recently completed and published work, Straight from Crooked, will be presented, which we've seen today, to the Bloomfield Township Public Library. And we are here celebrating that. The interment, for those of you that were not there, uh, took place at Whitechapel Cemetery earlier today. Her book is based on a biographical account of her mastery over her affliction with spasmodic torticollis. Donations in her memory may be sent to Habitat for Humanity and American Spasmodic Torticollis Association. I won't say that again. <laughs> so we just thank the Lord for her life. And I want the first person who wants to come up and speak to start thinking about what they're going to say. Um, just really briefly, I had a chance to read the book, and it was funny because Marianne said it was a brief read. It was a fast read, and it was a fun read. Um, I really enjoy the way she writes. She draws you in from the very first paragraph, you're all in. And that's a great honor, that's a great gift, because some books, like some movies, you gotta ramble up, ramble up, and ramble up. It's a movie, and you're like, okay, so this is gonna get interesting because I don't really want my money back. This something doesn't grab me real quick. You know, you sleep through the first 30 minutes. But her book was not like that. It grabs you from the very opening. 
and it was a wonderful delight. It was a wonderful read, and we're going to have one of our dear friends come up and share some more about the story of Ray Terry Gilbert. So, and your name? I'm Judy Cosgrove. Judy Cosgrove. So, Judy, thank you for coming, and thank you for taking this opportunity to share more of Ray with us. Oh, not that I see, no. doesn't work that way. This one's off and this one's off. I feel honored to have been a close friend of Amy's. Reenie was a one of a kind with grit and courage to be applauded. She also had a kind, sensitive side. I used to think she should have been a doctor. So lovingly did she tend to her brilliant husband's needs as he descended into Alzheimer's. I used to suggest she take a short respite for herself by having lunch with me but she would have none of it. Her nursing nurse and love were in full swing. As for her grit and courage, this was also in full swing when she became disabled with Doricolis. People refused, really refused to succumb to its devastating effects by fighting it with a determination to be unmatched. Beginning with the challenge of supporting her head on the faucet to clean the dishes, to inventing a way to stand straight and tall and carry on. Among other gifts, she was a friend with strong friendships. If you told her something in confidence, I'm quite, quite sure you couldn't um, beat it out of her. She was gifted with the ability to befriend all walks of life. Recently, she worked for Habitat for Humanity to secure a home for a deserving friend. I'm so proud. of reading for so many reasons. She is a published writer on Amazon. But after enormous effort, Reedy published straight from Crooked her account of her struggle with Torticolis. In Reedy, you know my overwhelming terror of public speaking. I wish we could, one more time, share a quart of lemon sorbet and laugh about this terror I am now muddling through. We will forever miss you, Mimi. No reason to be terrified. She didn't think. I didn't think. She did beautiful. <laughs> So we just thank God. Friends like that are priceless. And it's a wonderful symbol of your life when you have friends. You know, sometimes we live through life and wonder, when do I show up? You know, I don't know if anybody's ever done that if you've imagined your funeral. And sometimes we imagine, oh, everyone's coming. And other times when we do something wrong or we're feeling self-incriminating, we're like, oh, boy, no one's going to show up if they knew I did this. But it's a wonderful, wonderful testimony because guess what? There are people here that love Ray. There are people here that knew her and experienced the joy. What I loved about her was how she represented such a strong will. I was sharing at the great side that if you're going through a difficult time, just remember Ray and tell yourself, you know what, if she can do it, I don't need to get through this. You ought to be able to pull yourself up. The next speaker is going to be Wendy Wendy Clement, so I guess that's my cue. Be quiet. And now Wendy, come on up. So Wendy, please come on up. Yes. 
Okay, so windows out of the way, so just hold tight. Instructed to start coaxing you out of your seats. So, who has a message for you? Please come on. Yes. 
want to say I love Brittany. I just loved her so much. I had so much fun with her. I will miss her so much. And um, I, gosh, I will never, ever forget her. Thank you so much. All the sunflowers are very beautiful. I'm sure she is definitely appreciative. So now we're going to call someone else up or is someone already in the field? Okay, don't let me throw my fish in there now because I'll start throwing it out there. And if I point my finger at you, you'll have to speak. So you, it's better for the ones who are prepared to come than for me to come get you. There you go. Ilana. Hi, I'm Ilana, and I would just say Brittany was an acquaintance of mine um, through the Tea Party movement. And so I just want to mention briefly how I met her. Um, basically, back in 2009, when a lot of people were um, getting motivated about what was going on in the country. Um, I had put together a small rally at Gary Peters' office, which some of you know who that is. That's a U.S. House of Representatives um, for this area. And so anyway, me and Kathy Tyler showed up at one of those rallies, and that's how I met her. You know, however she showed up, I have no idea, but she was just there. And basically, the group of us decided, well, we're, we're not just going to stand out on the street corner with our signs and our legs. We're going to go in because we want to talk to Gary Peters. So we went into his office. A bunch of people did. And basically, I just remember, um, really, this was like the an initial impression because I did not know this woman, but basically she and Kathy Tyler got up there to the desk. Gary Peters obviously was not at his office, just talking to staff people, but I just distinctly remember, wow, that lady is really smart and she can talk really well. You know, she was up there saying her points about what was going on and I just was in awe. So that's what I wanted to pass on. Thank you for sharing So now, is there anybody else in the specific? Oh, you're ready. Yay. Fantastic. This would be great. I set you up, didn't I? Is it? Hanging in my room. 
of this project that I've done with her. So I just, I really enjoyed her, and I love that she was able to share that interest with us. I also know that she helped to nurture my and my brother's interests. With my brother, um, Bill Ratnoff, who wasn't able to make it today, he was really interested in architecture when he was younger. And my aunt Rini would
had this halo around. And Rainy, you know, there's the front of the Capitol stairs. Rainy walked over because she was sitting on the shade side, like a dummy I'm sitting on the sun side. She comes over and he started talking. The first couple sentences out of his mouth, she says, What did I tell you? He got done with his talk. The entire crowd, and not only the whole crowd that was there, but people from even around there started to come to listen to what he had to say. Because he has a way of saying things. He has a point of view that is just so very interesting. And he has, he has a, a charisma, that's what I call it. Chris's charisma. Afterwards, I wanted to go. I was hot and I was tired. My heart was starting to pound. And Chris was holding court. People were lined up, wanting his business card, wanting to know how to get a hold of him. Can you be on our radio show? Will you be on our TV show? Will you be on our whatever, you know, will you come to our school? So, I want Chris to speak after me because that's the last guy that I want to follow is Chris. Rainy and I began to realize that we shared a common bond in politics, and so that's, that's really what brought us together. It grew our friendship. Um, some of the things that you may not know as we, as we did our radio show, Rainy thought that, and she said um, on our show, this is a free country. And so one day we had no guests, and she decided, well, she's going to just talk about whatever she wanted to talk about. And I kicked her underneath the table. Now you could see us, but you couldn't see me kick her under the table. And so she looked right over at me and she said, Sylvia, why are you kicking me? And I just looked back into the camera and I smiled. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Um, how about if we talk about, and then I tried to change the subject. So, you know, um, Reedy to me will be a person who, when I needed something proofread, she was the one who, you know, God knows, she remembered her psychology, she remembered things that, that, I, that I forgot. She was, as you just put it, one of the smartest people that you could remember, that, that you could ever know. She kept us laughing. She kept me working hard. Um, you know, and it was all to prepare for life. It was all to prepare for, you know, for being a friend of Rini. She had to be on your toes. She spoke so highly of her husband, John, too, and wouldn't hesitate to help another person. Uh, I have no problems, and so she helped me all the time, too. And, boy, she was so proud of finishing her book. I got lessons from Rini about headaches, and they helped. She was a pioneer, she was a fighter, she was a self-starter, and she was a wonderful person. And although she's gone from this earth, I'll always remember her, and how I could kid her, and her wide-eyed looks. You know, to me, I've had a lot of losses recently, and life is precious. And all i got to say is don't hold back from telling someone that you love them, or how much they meant to you. I know I won't. Thanks to all of you, your her friends, because in the end, that's really all we have: friendship and love from those who are close to us. That's what really matters. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Those are great stories. Is Chris going to be next, or is there someone else? There's someone else. Hold on. Just hold on. That. I'm going to read what Doris's niece has written on her behalf. Doris loved Reedy for over 40 years. They were more than friends. They were soulmates and sisters. Doris is not able to write a tribute to Reedy, so I'm taking this opportunity to put into words what I think Doris would have liked to say as a remembrance to Reedy. Doris and Reedy met General Motors many years ago, and in spite of the age difference, 
our friendship began and was bonded over the years. Doris was there for Rini, and Rini was there for Doris. They traveled together, went to events, ate meals together, and when Rini married John, Doris was her maid of honor. Over the past few years, Doris's health has declined, and Rini was there for Doris and became a weekly Sunday visitor. Doris's eyes brightened as soon as Rini came in the door, and the two women were able to remember the good times and console each other when sorrow struck. I heard about Rini for many years before I met her. She certainly was the wonderful woman Doris told us she was. In fact, the first time I met Rini was when Doris was in the hospital after some major minor surgery. Rini was going to stay with Doris at home until Doris was able to stay on her own. And over the years, I got to know Rini and have been privileged to have known her. I was in visiting Doris in this past March, and Rini came to Doris's to celebrate Passover with us. It was also Rini's birthday, and I pondered as to what would be a thoughtful and appropriate gift. I just finished reading The Language of Flowers, and I knew that it was a book, a book, well anyway, in the book, the author uses flowers and their meanings as a theme for the story. It is those meaning of flowers that seem perfect to describe Rini. The color yellow is for friendship, kindness, happiness, and freedom. We can all agree those words describe Rini. The freesia and Peruvian lily represent friendship. The ivy represents dependence and endurance. The three petals of the iris represent faith, valor, and wisdom. A tulip bouquet shows elegance and grace, and on and on I can go, but as we can see, the language of flowers do really justice. There are also some flowers that convey the sadness that we feel today. The aloe is said to represent grief. The sweet pea is farewell. But I will think of Rini as she was, a devoted friend, a compassionate lady, inspirational, and full of love and life. Henry David Thoreau said, language of friendship is not in words, but in meanings. And with this, I agree. Thank you so much. And now, uh, Marianne, is there anybody else specific? Uh, David has his hand up, so we're going to have him come forward. And, and then Prudy. So Prudy, wherever you are, prepare your, your message. Thank you. So I didn't plan on speaking today, but I figured what better opportunity than this to practice public speaking. <laughs> There's a real reason why I decided to stand up. The stories that we heard so far um, kind of inspired me that really, really was an inspiration to all of us. And kind of, we can take a message from that inspiration in our lives every single day. And it's really that as she decided not to succumb to the world, to circumstances with her illness, but how she could, have, she could conquer the world and conquer her illness, and make the best out of every moment. I think we should take that same message, read it to ourselves every single day, and say how can we make the best out of what we have. If you decide, or if you have read her book, you'll know part of it that I'm going to talk about now. If not, please read the book. Um, but when I met Rini, or when my wife and I met Rini, our family, um, she seemed perfectly normal, very fit, normal person. And I was shocked to hear that she had such a devastating illness, this corticolis, where her head would lie literally on her shoulder and make her incapable to lead a normal quality life. And to think that really this lady standing here had this illness, and she managed to overcome that and be a conqueror against that disease. And she did that because she didn't succumb to the circumstances 
of the world and of her environment, but she decided, I'm going to fight this, I'm going to make the best of it. And she came up with an invention. There's a strap around her head, and she'd have to pull this strap initially to hold her head up so that um, she wouldn't be in pain and, the, and so that she could lead somewhat the normal life. Dr. Gilroy gave some suggestions how this strap, uh, the headband could have two straps and be attached to her belt. And she uh, overcome the disease and she was so proud of her invention, she felt that she could kind of change the world. Uh, she then decided to speak at one of the conferences being held by sufferers of this disease and she demonstrated this device and to her shock, nobody seemed whatsoever interested in this wonderful invention that could transform somebody's life. And what she realized there, what she says in the book, so many of the people had just given up. And a lot of the doctors were telling the people, you'll have it for life, you'll never overcome it. Uh, but I think that's a key message for all of us. She demonstrated to us, you can, you can make a difference, and you can only make a difference about the future. You can't change the past, so it's all up to us how we want to lead our lives. And I really think she's an inspiration to all of us, and we should take that piece away with us in the rest of our lives. Thank you. My name is Prudy, and um, Prudy and myself worked on a campaign together. And one of the things that I admire the most about, of many things, about Rini is that she, her loyalty. She had such wonderful loyalty, and um, there was a, a, a man who was running for Congress by the name John Kupian, and he had asked if I would form a, yeah, an advisory team for him. And so I'd asked Rini if she would serve and she still gets served on it also. And uh, she would do, she would research, she, would, when she was given an assignment, um, she researched that assignment and she always fulfilled the assignment, but again, what I admired so much about Rini was her loyalty. And, uh, I have a notebook that she had left um, and uh, has several pages of her notes in it. Was never able to get that notebook back to her, but I have some of the greenies, and so I'm going to keep that notebook. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. South Carolina, but Kathy was up visiting in Michigan around the time Reed was in the hospital after she suffered her stroke. And the kind of friend Kathy was to Reed was the kind of friend who canceled her personal plans for her short visit and spent the last day of Reed's uh, life with her at St. Joseph's Hospital in Pontiac. And these are Kathy's words for Reed. Rini's time with us was cut far too short. I know those here today agree that Rini touched their lives in a positive way. She was a compassionate, warm friend. She was intelligent, tenacious, courageous, and a great patriot. She's left her legacy with us with her book, Straight from Crooked, a beautiful, true story of Rini's struggle with Torricollis, her success, and the love she found along the way. She truly is an inspiration for all of us. I met Rini several years ago before she married John. She approached me at the gym where she worked to maintain the strength she had in her neck. She noticed I had neck problems and she offered to help me by teaching me exercises that had helped her. We spent a lot of time together at the gym and she did help me. Our friendship grew from that warm gesture of Rini reaching out to help. I was very happy for Rini when she started dating and later married John. She moved away for the short time she was with him. Tragically, their life was cut short when John was taken from Rini. 
She moved back to Fenton, and our bond was furthered after Rini's loss of John. We were able to share our grief because I had recently lost a brother in much the same way Rini lost John. I take comfort that Rini is with John now. I know he was the love of her life, and she missed him every single day. Rini believed in personal responsibility and limited constitutional government. She took her responsibility to participate in government very seriously. She worked tirelessly on the congressional campaign in District 5 in 2010. No one spoke more passionately in the fight to stop Obamacare than Rini. She drew on her knowledge from John about national health care and the impact it would have on our country. Many people heard her speak to this issue at many rallies and meetings that Rini attended. So we're gathered today to celebrate Rini's life, to say goodbye to this bold, courageous woman who touched our lives in a special way. When we think of Rini in the coming days and years, it will be with the joy we experience by having Rini as our friend. We will never forget Rini. Okay, I think, is there someone else here that would like this gentleman here? Please come on up. Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Hall. I'll do it here. Okay, I can bring my mic. No problem. Hold on, I'll bring the mic to you. My name is David Cosgrove, and I got to know, I got to know reading at the gym. We used to bump into one another while we'd both be sweating. <laughs> and, and I chat with her. Anyway, I, I never really knew her until I got a phone call from my wife and she said, would you mind picking up Reedy at the airport? She was coming home from Florida. And I, I wasn't too happy about that, quite frankly. <laughs> I mean, to, to spend three hours and it was right during the, the uh, 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 you, you know, whatever, it's getting more worse. Anyway, I went out and I picked her up, and that drive home was very enlightening to me. We talked a great deal about politics, about what was happening in the world, and I disagreed with her on most things. <laughs> but it was so refreshing to talk to someone who was so well informed. She was well informed on every subject that came up. Uh, I noticed in this write-up, it said when she graduated from uh, Wayne State University, she got she, she received a, 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 a Bachelor of Arts degree as well as an honorary by the cap. That wasn't honorary. That was well earned. She was a bright, bright. Thank you very much. Okay, is there anybody else that we have would like to share a story? Okay, the finger's being pointed at Chris, so you've been volunteered. <laughs> Again, someone else who needs no introduction and uh, no prep time for using the microphone. Chris Levels, and I'm honored and humbled to be a part of this celebration, and it has been a celebration today. It's so nice because you can really know a lot about a person by the people that come and honor them. It tells me I can look around the caliber of people in this room, and I feel good to be a part of it. And I guess I would ask a question. I might be the only one in the room, but has anybody else ever had somebody tell them they couldn't do something? Oh, there's one. Well, I'm not talking about your parents, that doesn't count. Oh, that's the Well, I know Reedy wasn't one of those people that said that. Because Reedy was the type of person that would tell you you could do anything and mean it. You know, there's a lot of people that are falsely flattered in this world. But everything that that woman said 
she meant from the bottom of her heart with the best intentions. And, you know, Sylvia wanted to, wanted me to tell you that I was Reedy's number one supporter, but that's so far from the truth. She was, I, when I met her, I was just getting started in uh, radio and internet and broadcasting. And uh, I was going on more, I guess, guts than, than knowledge or whatever, but you know, I was gung-ho about it. And this woman just was always there for me. She believed in me more than I believed in myself at the time. And I remember coming home from speaking from a tea party in Cass City, and I called her on the way home. And we probably talked, I think we talked until I got to the driveway. But I was telling her, you know, I would love to experience the success that a Glenn Beck or a Rush Limbaugh or those kind of guys have. And she said, you know what, you don't need to be the next Glenn Beck. You just be the first Chris Loves. And those are the kind of things when Wendy mentioned about shared accomplishments, how the children love to share their accomplishments with her. That's the kind of person she was. She wanted to multiply your happiness and divide your sorrow. Lori talked about her being nurtured. And that's what she did on all times. Was she just found out what you wanted. Found out what she could do for you. And she did her best to make it happen. I wish I could talk to my friend one more time, just once, to tell her how much she meant to me and means to me. Uh, I've been off the air on the radio on my own show. I've been doing other shows, but uh, my own show for three years. And you know, I'm really sad because this Sunday I'm going back on the air and my friend won't be around. At a time our country is just in some dire straits. And she would appreciate the content that I'm going to be bringing forth. Because she stood up and she wasn't afraid of anything. And, uh, you know, hopefully my work will continue to do her proud and her memory service. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for being here today and seeing my old friends as well as new. You know, because I suffered a heart attack in 26. So. I almost uh, beat her into, into this kind of service that the Lord spared me. So I'm glad he did. If nothing else is for this occasion to be able to speak on a memory of such a great person, such a lovely woman, and such an inspiration to so many. So I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to me. And uh, all I can say is may God bless your soul, baby. I love you. Thank you. Oh, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. For those of you who are trying to figure out where this little black lady come from, let me just kind of help you out. Uh, first of all, Mary Ann and I are very good friends, and I love her dearly. I truly, truly do. She's an impeccable woman, a great character. And I had the opportunity to meet Rini at my husband's speech. I'm the wife of Ron Edwards, who is the host of the so book. And Rini attended my husband's speeches, and that's where I had the opportunity to meet her. So that's just kind of to connect the dots for some of you wondering where did she come from, how did she stand up here in front of these people. And if Mary Ann asked me to do something, I'm going to say yes. So that is definitely why I'm here to celebrate the life of a beautiful woman. And we thank you guys for coming.